Today we've got a lot to talk about, so just sit back and relax. First of all, we're going to go over where we stand right now with the Longshoreman strike that is imminent. We need to talk about Princess Dining Rooms. Princess has released the list of the dining rooms for each one of their ships, and so you'll know which one is reserved for traditional, what will be reservable, they call it. In other words, you can make a reservation there, and then the walk-in dining room. And I've got some extra information for you about dining rooms and dining reservations. We also are going to talk about AARP Princess gift cards. I've got an update for you there. Um, the norovirus update on Royal Caribbean. They just recently had an outbreak of the nor norovirus, so um, I'm going to talk about that. Plus, uh, the little sign that is in all of the Azamara bathrooms, uh, the public bathrooms, and I really appreciated that sign and think it's a great help. Also, tendering on Azamara. As we move forward, I'm going to try to be sharing the experience that I had on Azamara with you. A lot to say about that. Today we're going to talk about tendering, so let's go ahead and get started. Hi there, this is Allison with Let's Go Travel Tips. Today is Monday, it is September 30th of 2024, very last day of September, if you can believe it, tomorrow's October. So this evening, come and join us for our live. We're going to be starting at 8 p.m. Eastern time as we usually do. You can ask me any question you want about um, Azamara. We are going to be leaving on Saturday to go to Athens for our celebrity cruise in the Mediterranean. So kind of a quick turnaround here, uh, but a lot is going on plus a lot is going on in the world of cruising. So come and be ready to uh, talk about cruising, bring your questions, and be prepared for a fun time. Now let's start at the very top with what is going on with that longshoreman strike. So unless an agreement is reached tonight at midnight, um, the current uh, contract that those longshoremen have is going to expire. And starting tomorrow or 12.01 a.m., uh, they are going to be starting to um, do their picket lines in um, all of the ports, um, all Atlantic and Gulf ports from Maine to Texas. Now, um, as they talked about going on strike, basically what they said was, let me share their statement with you. It says, the United States Maritime Alliance refuses to address a half century of wage subjugation where ocean carriers profits skyrocketed from millions to make a billion dollars while the ILA longshore wages remain flat. ILA unity remains strong and is and is growing is what the union said. And so, um, like I said, this strike is clearly pending, but I really appreciate that there are two exceptions that they are making. Um, first of all, they are still going to work for any um, shipping required for the U.S. military. And they are also going to take good care of cruise ships. It says that they realize that cruise passengers pay for their cruises. They um, plan them very far in advance of anything that would have to do with a strike. And so they are going to continue to work the cruise ships so that Americans and other people who come here can go ahead and take the vacations that they've got planned. So we'll see how everything shakes out. But for now, it's not going to affect cruising. And I really do hope that they make an agreement soon because this is very much going to impact supply um, in coming into the United States. It's going to affect a lot of the products, uh, food and other products that are available, as well as it is going to to impact exports of U.S. companies trying to get um, out of the United States. And so there's a lot at stake here, and it's a really, really big deal. Uh, way more important than um, I think a lot of us realize just looking at it from a uh, bird's eye view. So I'm really hopeful that this will get ironed out soon, and I'll keep you up to date when I hear anything about that. Next up, this is a really big deal. So I noticed yesterday, I think it was yesterday on our Facebook page, my time is still really different from being uh, far away and then traveling home. Um, it just, forgive me. So yesterday on our Facebook page, one of our Let's Go family members posted that they had gone onto the AARP website to purchase princess gift cards and they had not been able to do that. So some people were like, you know, they ran out of them for September. They're going to have them available in October. A Let's Go family member sent me an email uh, with the screenshots from a chat that they had had with AARP um, 
you know, how they you can chat and their employees will answer. Well, they said, you know what, we are no longer carrying princess gift cards. And so I really appreciated that update. And because I always ver try to verify it, as much as I can, I went and tried it and got the exact same answer. And so we'll see if anything raise stocks tomorrow, but from what the AARP employees are saying, they are no longer going to be carrying the princess gift cards. So let me know if you go on tomorrow and you're able to buy any princess gift cards, but they have been selling them at an 8% discount. That's what princess has allowed is an 8% discount there. And so um, I don't know if that's, um, it sounds like we're done with princess gift cards through AARP. I know a lot of people, um, if you have the princess gift cards, you can use them to pay for your cruise. You can, um, once you go on board, you can have them applied to cover, like to your account, so then it covers your onboard purchases. Um, they came in really handy. They were nice presents to give, nice presents to receive. And so just thought I'd bring you up to date on that. If you see anything different than that, please let me know. Another change, I will add another change that occurred not too long ago is uh, AARP changed the requirement that if you wanted to buy the Princess gift cards, you actually had to be a member of AARP. For a really long time, you could buy them and not have to be a member but uh, they changed that recently, and now they are saying that they are no longer going to carry Princess gift cards. Alrighty, so next up, let's talk about um, the main dining rooms on Princess. Uh, it's been a few months now. I wanna say it was the beginning of the summer. Princess announced that they were going to redo how they handle their main dining rooms on board their ships. So a long time ago, you all probably remember that they used to have traditional dining. Guests would come and you know, you had your assigned seating and you would uh, be seated. You would sit at the same table every evening. You'd have that same wait staff and that's just what you did on your cruise. Then people wanted flexibility. And so for quite a while, they had it so that they would have a traditional dining room and then they would have your anytime dining. And now we are to the point with how Princess wants people to make reservations in the app if they want reservations or um, so now you can make reservations for two kinds of dining you can uh, make a reservation for traditional dining if you want to and you are going to be seated in a certain seating like I said the same way same table every evening same wait staff and that's what you're going to do for every night of your cruise if you end up missing your dining time, then you can either try going to the walk-in main dining room or you can go enjoy the buffet, specialty dining, eat up by the pool, lots of options. International cafe, lots of options to eat on Princess. Uh, but that's the way they're doing it. And then they have another dining room that they're having uh, set aside for reservations. If you wanna go on the app and eat at six o'clock one e evening, seven o'clock another evening, um, you know, whatever, you can do that for that dining room. And then they're going to keep another Another main dining room just available for people that want to walk up when they want to eat so we've got what those dining rooms are now which is really helpful okay so I thought I would zip through them here for you really quickly so if you don't want to hear that just fast forward but I thought it would be really nice to hear what the main dining rooms are and you could kind of listen and see what ship you're going to be sailing on but I really appreciate that it gives us a really good idea of what's going on so the Coral Princess which is the next princess ship that Gordon and I will be sailing on that's for our Panama Canal group cruise we're doing next February, February 21st to 25, and we're going from LA to Fort Lauderdale. The Provence dining room is the traditional dining room, and the Bordeaux dining room is your walk-in dining room. Uh, for the reservable dining room, it's blank. <laughs> it's blank on the island and on the coral. And I think it might be because they're using one of the dining rooms Theoretically, I'm wondering for maybe for the reserve, for uh, suite guests and pe for guests who are in the reserve um, class mini suites, that they would have a dining room for them. The Crown Princess, the Michelangelo is traditional, Botticelli is reservable, and the Da Vinci is walk-in anytime. Caribbean Princess, we've got the Island Dining Room is, re is for traditional dining, the Palm Dining Room is reservable, and the Coral Dining Room is for walk-ins. Diamond Princess has the International dining room is the traditional dining. The Savoy dining room and the Vivaldi are for reservations and then the Pacific Moon and the Santa Fe dining room are for walk-ins. Uh, the Discovery Princess, Juno dining room for traditional and remember that's where Sunny is. <laughs> if you go on the Discovery Princess and you want a fun 
Excellent. Extraordinary attention to detail. Take such good care of you. Uh, request Sunny, S-U-N-N-Y. Um, he is the best. And uh, so the Ketchikan dining room is reservable and the Skagway dining room is the one you're going to be able to walk in anytime you want. On the Emerald, we've got the Michelangelo dining room is for traditional. Reservable is Botticelli and Da Vinci is walk in anytime. On the Enchanted, the Santorini dining room is the traditional. The Capri dining room is reservable and the Amalfi dining room is for walk-ins. Uh, the Grand Princess also has a Michelangelo dining room, and that's the traditional one. Uh, Botticelli is reservable, and the Da Vinci, do you see a pattern here, is also is the walk-in dining room. The Island um, Princess has a Provence dining room for traditional, does not have one for the reservable, and then the walk-in is the Bordeaux. The Majestic has the Symphony Dining Room is for the traditional. The Allegro is for uh, reservable. And the Concerto is for walk-ins. The Regal Princess also has a Symphony Dining Room for traditional. The Allegro for reservable and the Concerto for walk-ins. The Royal is um, just the same. Symphony for traditional, um, Allegro for... Uh, for the reservations and then the concerto for walk-ins. The Ruby Princess has the Michelangelo as traditional, the Botticelli is reservable, and the Da Vinci Dining Room is for walk-ins. The Sapphire Princess has the International Dining Room for traditional, the Savoy and Vivaldi Dining Rooms for reservations, and the Pacific Moon and the Santa Fe for walk-ins. The Sky Princess has the Soleil Dining Room for traditional, the Cielo Dining Room is is for the reservable and the Estrella dining room is for walk-ins and then finally our beautiful Sun Princess um, this is not updated and so I'll just let you know when I hear this says the horizon horizon and Americana dining room when they did that they forgot <laughs> that they are changing the names of their dining rooms which I think is appropriate and so um, when I hear for sure which dining room is which on the Sun Princess I'll let you know Okay, so along with thinking about dining rooms, a lot of people, and I know this is so important, you plan your vacation, you want to know what time you're eating dinner, you've got all of these things that you want to be able to do, so you want to know you want to be able to eat at that time. And then you go into the app and you can't get a reservation for that time. So let me tell you, uh, when Princess lets uh, reservations be made in the app, they do not release all of the reservations, all of the tables that are available, both in main dining rooms as well as in specialty dining rooms. And so if you can't get the time that you want, when you get on board the ship, you've got a couple of options when you get on board. First of all, um, if you know what you want every evening, um, ask. Um, you can ask at guest services, and I you can ask anybody. Like right, you know how when you get on the ship, there's crew members waiting around so they can answer your questions, take care of what you need. Ask them where it is that they are taking care of dining reservations that day, and they will give you a location. For example, on the Discovery Princess, it's over there at the Catch by Rudy's, and um, you can go there and ask for what it is that you want, or you can call the dining line. The dining line does not have really long hours. They open at about 8.05 in the morning, and they're closed uh, early by four or five in the evening. You can, and sometimes there's long wait times, but you can call and just say, I would like to eat in whatever dining room it is this evening or tomorrow, and they'll help you get a reservation based on what's available. Um, I have noticed people posting lately on a lot of Facebook groups that they were not able to make the reservations that they wanted in the app before they got on the ship. And I was especially happy when someone said that about the Sun Princess, because the Sun Princess has so much experiential as well as specialty dining and they've been able to do everything that they wanted uh, to do uh, during the course of their cruise and so don't think that all is lost um, go ahead and do that the other thing I would say is for large groups it is hard to in the app to make a reservation for a very large group at all even if you put in the uh, booking numbers It'll usually just say that nothing is available. And so if you have a group of a few of you, I would make reservations for the size of group that you're able to. And then once you get on board the ship, you can tell them you need one table and you have a better shot. The largest tables that I've seen is for 12 guests on Princess. Um, I am sure they can add in a few more if they want to, um, to a large, large table. But that is the size of the largest table that I have seen guests sitting at on Princess. All right. So in the comments, will you 
please let me know how your efforts have been going to make reservations in the app, what your experience has been recently when you've been on a princess cruise as far as being able to get reservations for the time that you wanted to get either before you went or while you were on board the cruise. I'm really happy to hear that a lot of people are having success with being able to get those reservations for specialty and experiential dining that they want to have. Alrighty, next up, I'm going to try to cover um, lots of cruise lines a little bit better. So if anyone is looking at going on a cruise on Regent Seven Seas Cruise Line, maybe it's a nice time you would like to think about it now because they currently have a promo that with the cruise that you book, you get a free first class air uh, for sailings for the Alaska, Caribbean, Canada, and New England voyages. So see if that applies to the one that you want to go on, or um, if you need help with it, you're welcome to call me and I'm delighted to help you with Regent, but um, it's on my list of cruise lines to try. I think that I want to try a couple of other ones first, but I um, wanted to let you know about that great promo that's going on. First class air included with your cruise. Now, um, tendering on Azamara. So uh, uh, there's so many things. Somebody had asked me, what's the difference or what's the same with Princess and Azamara? Uh, well, I'm going to cover that in another video, but let me tell you, Azamara does an excellent job with tendering. So when you come to their ports on the cruise that I was just on, seven days, it was a France intensive there in the south of France, and we had, uh, like I said, it was only a seven-day cruise, which is very short for Azamara. We had three tender ports, and the third one ended up being a tender port because of the weather. It was just so windy that um, they ended up doing it that way. Um, they said that on that day. Well, uh, so here's how it works. <laughs> uh, when you get there and you're tendered, the um, captain comes over the loudspeaker and lets everyone know that we're now anchored, that the tenders are running, lets you know where the gangway is, which is generally on deck three. And uh, it works really smoothly. So they'll have, just like on other ships, they'll have the excursion groups meet. Usually it was in the cabaret um, lounge there. You would meet until they call your number. Then you all proceed together to go out and get on the tender. But other guests, if they just want to go ashore, just go along to the tender whenever they want to. None of this business of having to go and get your ticket and wait for a really long time. It just worked really smoothly. Uh, now, mind you, these are smaller ships, and so you don't have thousands of people trying to get off. Um, on our sailing, we had the ship hold 700 guests. We had 656, and I did both. I did excursions with a tender, and I did a tender just wanting to go ashore on my own, and I didn't have to wait a long time either time, um, any of those times. I did excursions on two of the days, um, and and then I just came back when I wanted to. And then on the day that I just went in on my own, um, like they happened to be unloading um, the tender, uh, bringing it back, getting a couple of people that had come back early, let them off, and then um, we were able to get right on. So I would say if you are looking and thinking about booking an Azamara cruise and you look um, and you see that there are a lot of tender ports, that doesn't should not cause stress whatsoever. It worked so very smoothly, and you could get off earlier if you wanted to. You can get off later if you want to. They did a really nice job. I noticed that when they took our excursion groups down, that there were guests. Some guests were already on the tender who were going ashore on their own. One day there were a few waiting, but they worked them in to be able to come with us. So, I would say that tendering. Uh, works like a dream on Azamara. So thought I would share that with you. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, will you please go ahead and hit that subscribe button? Today's the day. And if you appreciate my updates, would you please give this video a thumbs up? I sure appreciate it. Thank you very much. Now, Royal Caribbean. Royal Caribbean, we've seen it talked about a lot in the news. They just had a norovirus outbreak on their very last sailing to Alaska this year on the Radiance of the Seas. Now, we never, ever, ever, like to hear about a norovirus outbreak on a ship and it really of course makes you worry an awful lot it makes you feel bad for the people who were on the trip and got sick but um, they say that they have counted 167 guests who had norovirus but they said that there were some 
people that were sick earlier in the cruise um, before they figured out exactly what was going on. So it could have been more guests. But what I really wanted to talk about with this is how important it is to wash your hands and be really careful. And this stood out to me whenever you go there in a public bathroom on Azamara, um, on every mirror, when you're washing your hands, it reminds you to wash your hands very thoroughly. It reminds you, I really appreciated this, so they had both paper towels and they had those nice little hand towels that you dry your hands on and then put in the little receptacle there for them. They actually reminded you to take one of the towels and turn the water off with that so that you don't have to touch the faucet again and use that same towel to open the door and then they had the little receptacle for them placed very handily that you could just open the door with that little towel and then um, turn around and put it in there before you went out the door. So um, I guess the norovirus outbreak and what I saw with that little sign on Azamara really reminds us once again how important it is to wash your hands and uh, be really careful with everything that you touch. So just a friendly reminder to everybody. I'm really looking forward to seeing you this evening at our live. Thanks for joining me today, and I'll be talking to you all again really soon. You all take really good care. God bless you. Love you. Bye.